Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Alexander Lash, and I'm uh, the last one in this panel to talk about uh, transforming Pietist uh, transition um, tradition. And I would give the talk uh, about uh, exploring uh, Moravian text worlds. It is an uh, extraordinary pressure to me um, for me to introduce a small part of the work of my team and of my uh, of me this afternoon. And um, for about 20 years now, I have been uh, dealing with questions about the Moravian Brethren Unity or the Hanuto Brüdergemeine or the, or the Moravian Church uh, with varying degrees of intensity. For years, I tried to do this only from me and from the point of uh, German linguistics and history of German language and the language and religion, which turned out to be not very great for marketing the subject. But today I can say that we found a way to build strong partnerships by trying to include other humanities as well. And not only researchers are exploring the archives. We have integrated the topic into our teaching and collaborate with citizen scientists, and that is most important for us. Only in collaboration it is possible um, for me not only to do post-colonial studies or construction grammar research like Katie uh, introduced me on a subject, but also to gain knowledge about architecture, garden design, so-called Naturaliensammlungen, or cartography. This is exactly the idea behind the Moravian Knowledge Network faded in. I've given you the teaser to our Hypothese blog. It's about nothing less than finding ways to recover and connect sets of knowledge to bring together scholars from different disciplines with their own questions about the Hanut or the Moravian tradition, students and citizen scientists. And I will show you some of this later in this talk. How we do that is what I want to develop today in these steps. After a short, a short introduction, I will give you an overview over the panel and over the textual cosmos of the Moravians and put it in relation to the world of the Moravian church. Afterwards, I will bring both aspects together. Before you take blurry pictures uh, with a smartphone, may I point out that uh, you can already find the presentation at Sinodo, yeah? And uh, I will leave this slide so you can uh, also search after me in person or my name and you find it as well. Okay, let's take a look um, at the Moravian church. We heard a lot of Halle and a lot of uh, pietism um, um, from Katie and from Philip, and I will look to Hanhut itself. The Moravian church can be generally understood as a pietistic community foundation. Based on various ideas, it can be traced back to Nicolaus Ludwig uh, Graf von Zinzendorf, who settled Bohemian exiles, the old Moravian Brethren community in Eastern Saxony from 1722. In 1727, the community was renewed and unlike August Hermann Franke in Halle, Zinzendorf developed a religion of the heart in which feeling was given a very important role. You see, you see some of the dates on the slide. At the center of the community is Jesus Christ. In Christ, all people are equal if they confess him. You see here the so-called Erstlingsbild, first fruit, by Johann Valentin Haidt. Haidt implemented the central ideas and principal ideas of the community in programmatic pictorial designs as like this, to which I as linguist uh, have only limited access. I don't know if uh, any of you are uh, an art historian uh, to help me to um, describe this picture. Yeah? You see, we have to collaborate with other disciplines to explain um, the rich um, heritage of the Moravians. 
The fifth principle of the community is equality. Equality of genders, equality of nations. In principle, all believers can be recognized and awakened by God. Faith and awakening are regarded as signs of God's electing grace. All awakened members of the community are equal in Christ. This equality is not only expressed in programmatic texts or in images uh, like heights, but it becomes, like simplicity and plainness, a guiding principle of the community. Here you can see the assembly hall in Herrnhut uh, before its restoration. Uh, the photo is taken in 2001. Just as the members of the community seated separately by gender and organized by houses, listened to their worship service. They also brought down to us if they have, as they say, passed through time. And this is also uh, the principle of equality yeah, that you can see in architecture. In this understanding, uh, the Moravians are unique. While we also encounter the concept of predestination in other Christian communities, which is the idea of attaining eternal life after death, Moravians are certain of it. Those who live in the community and are allowed to participate um, in the communion are already chosen for the Lord's community in this earthly life. They only live one life and only um, uh, go to another place uh, where they live further. For reasons that I cannot delve into today, Zinzendorf perceives the Moravian Church as a so-called pilgrim community that lives out the missionary mandate of Jesus Christ. In German, after Matthew 28, 16 till 20, Darum geht hin und lehret alle Völker, taufet sie auf den Namen des Vaters, des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes und lehret sie halten alles, was ich euch befohlen habe. Und siehe, ich bin bei euch alle Tage bis an der Welt Ende. And the Moravians are very active, very active uh, uh, in the mission fields. They are building a global network in only a few years that not uh, particular, uh, uh, practically without any experience or financial resources that not only connect the, the old and the new world, but also brings together people of various nations leading to exchange of goods and knowledge. Moreover, it ch uh, challenges our discipline-orientated humanities. While I won't delve into it separately in this talk, I want to say it clearly um, that we strive to approach the subject from a post-colonial perspective too, yeah? but I cannot talk about it today. The third one. This is leading to the third principle, reflexivity. However, in order to prove oneself as a member of the community and to demonstrate the state of one's own heart, a high degree of self-reflection is necessary. Moreover, methods of examination and documentation must be developed that illustrate both personal growth in Jesus Christ and on the one hand and the progress of God's work uh, on the other hand. Over the years, we can recognize linguistic and textual patterns, um, architecture, garden culture, and so on. Um, patterns in this documentation, a Moravian style, if you, so, if you like. That brings me to the second point, Moravian texts. With a history of almost 300 years and the will to document you can perhaps already guess why I have dedicated a separate chapter to Moravian texts. I will give you here only a very brief overview of the text, genres and sources that have the highest relevance for me as a linguist. I focus here with, uh, first on the mediated artifacts, not the artifacts itself. In reports and records, the Moravians summarized their community work and decisions. One of the most important sources might be the so-called records of the Unitate's Eldesten Conference, Unity Elders Conference, a part of uh, which is currently being digitized in the Moravian Archive Bethlehem. 
communication between different locations and people is realized through letters like Philip showed, yeah? um, part of which is also being copied in order to make them available to a wider public. They are then disseminated like a large number of sermons and biographies, um, Moravian lives, uh, Katie mentioned, and diaries, travel, and mission reports, for example, in the so-called Gemeinnachrichten uh, from uh, 1765, which are initially copied by hand and given away to our community members on interested uh, friends. From the early 19th century on, also uh, printed as the so-called Nachrichten aus der Brüdergemeine from 1819 to 1894 or 5, and then as, uh, then as Mitteilungen aus der Brüdergemeine. We have um, a close corpus about 300 years um, that we can um, analyze in network analysis or corpus linguistics. This is framed by translations and major missionary narratives. Unfortunately, I'm not um, a musicologist. And so I can't um, uh, analyze the great song collections that we have uh, uh, from the Moravians. As you must know, in self-understanding, the Moravians are a singing community, not a writing community. And uh, that may be uh, one of the keys to analyze the community and her practices. In addition to these uh, um, easily accessible, but not always easily accessible uh, sources, church records are also kept. Herbaria of Moravian provenance appear in collections. We find cartographic collections and much more, and so on. It would be nice if we then had only one corpus language, yeah, such as English or German. And it's a little absurd to speak in English today um, because um, the main language of the Moravian sources in the 18th century is German, of course. If you approach the Moravian sources, you must also have a good knowledge of German. It's true that gradually English is also becoming more important for the community in the, uh, later in the 18th century, but only as a secondary language, which is really interesting from a linguistic perspective. The text for the daily faith work, in example, central uh, Bible passages, songs, uh, songs and so on, um, are available um, in, very, uh, in a great amount of languages, some of which the Moravians recorded for the first time ever uh, in, for example, in North America. To explore our Moravian texts, music sheets, plant collections, and so on, we build up a next generation uh, reference corpus, in short, NARC, uh, for the Moravian Knowledge Network in cooperation with the Sächsische Landesbibliothek, Staats- and Universitätsbibliothek, I love this name, uh, short, in short, SLUB, or SLUB. And this corpus will uh, address a very um, a large scale of interests for many scientists. And I only will look on linguistic, historical, discourse, linguistic, and construction, grammatical um, um, issues that I can't um, evolve today. But we are uh, working together on these resources. Maybe, and that's the main question um, on this um, collaboration is that we want to understand the global effects of European expansionism, uh, uh, which the uh, Moravians documented. And I will show you the resources that you always can use today. Yeah? We have um, uh, the so-called Sachsen Digital. It is um, a portal that you can uh, or where you can uh, show at the uh, handwritten Gemeinnachrichten um, from 1764 to 1806, and uh, as well as a German language sources from the Moravian archive in Bethlehem. Um, they are also all available uh, at the source of Mary Sings. Um, at this place, I go to one of my student assistants, Marlene Wolf, who created over 10,000 entries by hand from the uh, Gemeinnachrichten uh, for sure. Yeah. You can see an excerpt from this list, a little one, yeah, um, on this slide. 
the Nachrichten of the Brüdergemeine, uh, which were printed from 1890, uh, 1890 on, are not only available to us in uh, still, optimi still to be optimized version, but are also available to, our, um, to you as a special corpus um, at the Deutsches Textarchiv, uh, which you see uh, left uh, on the button. We report on all this on Moravian Knowledge Network blog. Here you can find um, information about our corpora and also presentations, publications, and activities. You see it uh, in the right corner. How we work, um, we see um, uh, Catherine worked with uh, Transcribus um, to um, uh, translate and uh, um, the handwritten um, sources. You see a digitized image of a letter from the Gemeinnachrichten from 1806. Um, if you look behind, this is the text aus einem Briefe des Bruder David Seisbergers in Goschen am Muskingum an Bruder Gotthold Reichel in Salem am 17. Mai 1805. It's very well written, you, if you can uh, uh, read in German and like a little bit in German current, uh, there's a way to, to get this text. Uh, but um, I would say not many of us can uh, read a German current. And so we uh, build up a German current podcast where we um, ask <laughs> citizen scientists uh, old, old people, yeah, um, to read the texts for us. So can, you can listen to the podcast and you have the, the images and so you can learn um, to read the current uh, with um, uh, uh, the podcast. It's a very cool tool and uh, I wonder why we are the first who made this. Yeah. Okay, uh, we used um, Larex to um, the build up the structure and the training material for UCR, uh, which we realized with the SLOB that only, I, I only want to show you how the workflow is uh, in Dresden. It's a little bit separate from, from Bucknell, but we tried this way and uh, tried to, to keep the, the citizen scientists and the students together and to build up a commu local community for collaboration um, and to have fun, work with each other at one place. Okay, so let's take a look at Moravian worlds. I talked a lot of, about texts and that's not all. And then we have to, uh, because we have to um, know a lot about um, the special conditions. Uh, uh, if you look to the Moravian church uh, in the mission fields, um, and I show you uh, something like this uh, on this image of David Zeisberger. This is a historicizing picture you see of one of the most influential missionaries among the Native Americans, David Zeisberger Jr., I would say. And he was born in uh, Moravia in 1721. And his parents, David and Rosina, were among the first families who live in Hernhut from 1726. It is clear to me that one could describe the Moravian people's engagement uh, in colony, uh, colonial contexts in more detail, just on the basis of this picture by Christian Schüssel. But I want to leave it at that today, at this comment, um, because you, uh, just because um, we Europeans, and I include white America, point at the things that does not mean that we are working together with Native Americans, for example, on a new history. Um, that should be our task. David Seisberger Jr., as I said, was born in 1721 and his parents came to Hernhut and were among the first missionaries to travel um, to Georgia. Uh, David Jr., uh, as I may call it now, uh, went to Georgia in 1738. Uh, uh, the problem is this, uh, that um, his father, David Seisberger, and he, he David Seisberger, uh, were uh, always called like this. And you see, for example, um, uh, the, the place where David Seisberger 
um, or, or the Gottes Acker in Bethlehem, lies on the Gottes Acker in Bethlehem, but it's not the David Zeisberger Jr., which I mean. Yeah? So, uh, only mention, uh, only a, a, a mention worth at the moment. Okay, and this are only, uh, is a map in progress we built with UMAP, and that's an open source tool um, that you can easily use and bring information together. I will show you uh, some details in the talk. And um, uh, I will go to Pennsylvania on the next step. In 1790, uh, 1739 or 1740, David Jr. moved to Pennsylvania and was involved with his family, founding the settlements of Nazareth and Bethlehem. And uh, you might recognize this colleague here left in this picture, that's Katie. And one of my, uh, two of my PhD students, uh, namely D uh, Dominic and, and Robert, who went to Pennsylvania last summer um, to make 3D models of historical places of the Moravians. If you like, you can use your phone and uh, take, uh, um, uh, take a look at the 3D models of the Cray, Cot uh, Cray Cottage and the Whitfield House which built the Moravians for Whitfield um, uh, in Nazareth. And this one, this two one, I can show you today, um, but um, I will take also a look in the browser in the discussion maybe to show you more of the um, possibilities with these models, yeah? Okay. And we need these places to, to show how the people live and where they go and what they do in their lives. And today, the Woodfield House, I will show you later, is a museum where you can see all letters and um, uh, pictures and other things that connected to the Moravians. And if you know Hernhut in um, Eastern Saxony, um, you will also be familiar with all the things you see in this Woodfield House in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And to show this to students, um, uh, uh, hopefully uh, interest uh, them in the, um, in the issue. Okay, that's the last point for me, Moravian text words, how we bring this together. Yeah? We have 3D models, we have uh, UMAP, we have text, we, uh, how we bring this together in um, uh, teaching and researching context. Okay, Moravian text words. One of my favorite uh, letters uh, that we have uh, digitized in the Gemeinachten is one of uh, Bruder David Zeisberger. I, I read it uh, short. Uh, nun folgt uh, noch ein kurzer Bericht von Bruder David Zeisbergers Reise mit den Indianerbrüdern, sorry for this, Isaac and Wilhelm zu den Schavanosen. Um, in English, a short report about uh, travel from uh, David Zeisberger with uh, two uh, natives uh, in 1774. What to know about this travel and this letter? Um, you can see a quote of Zeisberger. Um, and he explains that the Moravians are not to be confused with the kind of white people called Sunday Indians or Shawnaks by the natives. Uh, Sunday Indians are people who go only in church. Yeah, uh, 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 go in church. Um, it's a um, imperative um, uh, term for, um, yeah later on for the white people. Self-positionings like this are not surprising when one recalls the principle of the Moravians. In Christ, all are equal regardless of gender, regardless of nation. The Moravian sources can be considered yeah, as an important corrective to our Western view of the world. Yeah, this is um, in uh, one, one resource that uh, shows that. But that's not the only one. You can see here a letter from 1806 aus einem Briefe des Bruder Zeisbergers aus Goshen an Muskimu. He will die in Goshen 
Um, few, few, uh, I think uh, two years later, one year or two years later, and um, Zeisberger was considered extremely gifted um, and talented in uh, language learning. But unfortunately, we know very little about uh, his education in Pennsylvania. Only one thing is clear today. He documented and learned in um, many languages wherever he could. In the quote, he reflects exactly this. Um, in German, das gehört auch dazu, eine Sprache zu lernen und je mehr man hineinkommt, desto mehr Lust kriegt man. He's a uh, linguist, uh, if you like, and I will show you what this means to the Europeans. I will, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not good at French, so I will show you the English summary of this. Um, you only have to know that Wilhelm von Humboldt um, uh, writes to Peter Stephen Dupont Co. Uh, um, uh, on, uh, in April 1823, and Humboldt was um, convinced um, that further studies of the so-called wild languages of North America would be found, and he awaited Zeisberger's grammar uh, with impatience. But Humboldt never held the grammar of the so-called Onondogan, uh, a North European language, um, in his hands, which um, he asked for several times to Peter Stephen Co. And I will show you something interesting. What if we have the grammar today? We digitized it uh, in collaboration with, with the Moravian Archive Bethlehem. And on the right hand, you see uh, the first transcription of the grammar um, that we will publish in a few months. What I will show you is that Zeisberger is part of a network that um, shares knowledge around the world. And language is not the only knowledge you can share. You can uh, share, um, uh, you see here, the Moravian Knowledge Archive, um, the, um, the knowledge that shared in the 18th and 19th century about grammar or languages, but it is, it is also shared knowledge about garden art, architecture and, and so on. And I will show you this, this is so-called Kinderplantage. Uh, they're not uh, childs are raised, uh, but uh, it's a playground for for uh, children in Kleinwelka uh, uh, station, uh, a so-called Ortsgemeine uh, in the near of Hernhut, and it's possibly I don't want to say it in public, but I say it now. It's possible that we have two. You see two little rondels. Uh, up in the, uh, in the upper corner in this um, um, uh, image, and maybe that are some of the first screen classrooms we have uh, on track. Yeah. Thanks to Dora Kinderman and Josefine Salomo to find this uh, great uh, detail in, in the archives. And the last one are natural uh, uh, plants um, that were um, sent from all over the world. Um, to Germany um, and used in the uh, education in um, Barbie or Hanhut or Niski and so on. I will show you this later in, uh, on a browser, uh, browser view. Okay. To give it, um, to make a long story short, if we want to collaborate digital, we have to collaborate in person. Yeah. Um, Robert and um, Dominic visited um, Kathy in um, Pennsylvania. And on the right, you see Juan Garces um, from the SLUB. He's not here today, um, in Gnadental, uh, South Africa. And we want to show um, some details about Moravian lives and historical places. And we use um, these um, tools uh, to work together. Um, we track um, traces uh, or records of, on UMAP, we share um, data on Wikidata, um, we have GitHubs, we use Zotero. Um, this publication or this presentation you can find on Zenodo and about all this we report on the blog uh, and uh, Moravian Knowledge Network. Okay, that's it for today. 
And for the um, discussion, I want to show you some details in the browser, but thank you uh, for today.